migration to the EU and within the EU is increasing and increasing, which is good. People in the EU are also living longer than ever before, which is also good. But since we're getting less and less children, the EU population is getting older and older. Which is not that good. Because less and less people pay into public pension systems and more and more people take money out of those public pension systems. Which makes the European public pension systems a ticking time bomb. You can see here how much pension people in the EU get compared to the salaries they had before. Irish people get in retirement only 35% of the salary they had previously despite having 8 hours more time to spend money. Bad combination if you ask me. And that's why the EU came up with a new idea to solve the pension problem of more than 240 million people. PEP. A European pension that is easy to get, transparent, mobile when you change residency, digital, all kinds of cool stuff. Let's take a look at that new European pension PEP that is supposed to start next month. What's up everybody, welcome to a new pension video from Perfinex, the number one English speaking and independent financial planner in Germany. Today with a video for everyone in the European Union, not just Germany. Because today we'll take a look at PEP, the Pan-European Personal Pension Product. So it should actually be PEP with three P's. But anyway. PEP with only two P's is supposed to solve the pension problem that many people face that want to move freely within the EU. Usually you have to pay into the national pension systems for at least a couple of years before you get some of your money back. Here in Germany it is 5 years, in Austria it's 15 years. So if you move around inside the EU every other year, it can happen that you pay into a lot of different public pension systems, but you get out actually nothing. And that's pretty bad, is it? So let's see how PEP will fit into the German pension system. For everyone watching from outside of Germany, there's chapters in the timeline below. You can just skip the German pension system part if you only want to know about PEP. Germany's pension system is built in three different levels. And for the first time ever, thanks to PEP, we will have two different pensions within each pension level. So it looks like this. Pension level 1 is the German public pension. This one is mandatory for all employees in Germany, as it is part of the German social security system. You pay in 18.6% of your gross salary, split 50-50 with your employer. 9.3% by you and 9.3% by the company that you work for. That's a lot of money! What do you get for that money? Public pension points. As the contributions from the current workforce pays for the pensions of the previous generation, your contributions are not for your own pension. Your pension will come from the working generations after you. And your future pension is determined by public pension points. The average German salary, which was 41,541 euros in 2021, will reward you with one public pension points. Half that salary will give you half a pension point, twice that salary will give you two pension points, which is the maximum you can get every year, even if you earn millions. In retirement age, the German public pension will sum up all the points that you accumulated over your career and pay you roughly 34 euros in monthly gross pension for every point that you have. Of course you have to pay taxes, health insurance and care insurance from the gross pension as well. Like many other European public pensions, the German public pension sucks. Check out this video that will explain the letter they send you every year with projections on your personal pension. Also in pension level 1 is the Rüro pension or base pension, which is basically the public pension on steroids. It's voluntary to get, you can choose yourself how much you want to pay in, you can also change that. What you save inside your base pension is safe for you and for you only and that's why you can invest your contributions in ETFs and mutual funds. Very similar to the German public pension, but better in every aspect. Check out this video on more details on pensions level 1 and this video to find out how you can invest in ETFs while saving some tax money. Pensions level 2 are kind of the workplace pension. 
You have the company pension that you can save some taxes and social security money while you're contributing. Of course, you have to pay that money in retirement then. Don't think Finanzamt will let you off the hook. You're not getting anything for free here. The idea is that your tax rate and your social security contributions while you're working now are probably higher than in retirement. And that's why it can be worth it to get a company pension for yourself. And there's also a mandatory 15% bonus from your employer. Check out this video with all details on the five different types of company pensions in Germany. Also in pension level two is the Riester pension or the Reister as many of you call it. This is probably the most prominent pension among the expert community because of the government bonuses that you will get. Every adult having a Riester pension will get 175 euros a year from the government plus 300 euros a year for every child that you have. And that's why it's a pretty, pretty cool pension for families living here in Germany. Check out this video with all details. Last German pension level is pension level 3. So far, it was all kinds of private pensions that didn't fit into pensions level 1 or level 2. That is also the only pension level that doesn't offer tax benefits while you contribute. Here you get the tax benefits when you take money out. And since there are no tax benefits while you pay in, there's also no restrictions on how to get your money back. You want a monthly pension? Fine. You want everything paid out in a lump sum? Okay. Pensions level 3 offer the most freedom and that's why a lot of you expats like that pension level so much. That's also where many of you compare it with a regular investment account, which is a classic apples versus oranges comparison. Check out this video to find out why. And now we come to the new European pension, PEP, that will supplement the German pension system. PEP will not replace any existing pension. So you also cannot swap from the public pension to PEP as you cannot swap from any of the other pensions here. The German public pension is always mandatory as long as you're an employee here in Germany. If all these different kinds of pensions confuse you, which I can understand because it's a little much, this video can help you to determine which pension is right for you. And you can also secure a free meeting with us so we discuss together which pension makes the most sense for your personal situation. So this is how PEP fits into the German pension system. But what is it exactly? The idea from the European Union is to give the over 240 million people living in the EU a better choice when saving for their retirement. That's a pretty bold statement, but okay. Hopefully PEP achieves its goal because currently only 27% of Europeans between age 25 and 59 have enrolled in a voluntary pension. And that's why we have a big, big challenge with old age poverty here in the EU. You saw how much pension we're getting in the table at the beginning of this video. It's a horrible statistic. PEP wants to tackle this challenge by offering us consumers various incentives. PEP is supposed to be digital and online, which should make it more attractive, especially for young people living in the EU. We are not sure yet if you can get it completely online, like an Amazon order with just a couple of clicks, because the EU also wants some mandatory personal financial advice. As pensions are made for the long term, the EU wants you to be able to make an informed decision before getting a PEP hand over fist. You should get a PEP online, but also with personal advice. I know a company in Munich that is doing exactly that for its clients for many years now. If anybody from the European Union is watching, feel free to contact us and we'll help the 240 million people in the EU out. The core concept of PEP is flexibility, right? So when you get a PEP in any European country and change residency to another European country, you should be able to take your PEP with you. If that's not possible, for whatever reason, you can switch to another PEP provider completely free of charge. That's pretty cool. And flexibility doesn't stop here. As with all pensions level 3, you have full control over how your savings are returned to you in retirement age. You can choose a monthly pension, annuity or a lump sum payment. We'll see what the tax implications will be because currently, at least here in Germany, there's different tax rates for both options. PEP will also be fully transparent when it comes to the fees and costs. Fees are also supposed to be capped at 1%. 
And maybe, for the first time ever, all that contract stuff will be available in English. We'll see what happens. And lastly, PEP should also offer a somewhat flexible investing that you can choose every once in a while. PEP is supposed to offer a maximum of six different investment options and every PEP provider has to offer basic PEP. Basic PEP is focused on guarantees because PEP providers will have a legal obligation to return at least the invested capital. That's a scam towards us consumers though and this is where I sincerely hope that the EU is not gonna f*** this up. Man, I hope somebody from the European Union is watching. If we invest 100 euro in our basic PEP today with the goal of returning the invested capital, I get only 55 euros in real value back in 30 years considering a 2% inflation rate and only 41 euros real value if I consider the 1% fees on top of that. Please, European Union, please do not f*** our pep up. This has the potential to be a very cool pension. Make something out of that potential. And that sums up my thoughts on pep. It sounds very interesting, especially for all you experts out there, but there's a lot of open questions that need to be clarified. So let's see if PEP really starts one month from now. For now, I remain carefully excited until we get to know more details about PEP. What do you think about PEP? Let us know in the comments below. Take care everyone and see you next Friday.